I'm the eldest child of two teachers. They brought me home from hospital to the school that I spent the rest of my childhood living in and attending. At the age of 16, I announced that I would never become a teacher. And in my final year at university, it was, of course, the first job that I applied for. I have a troubled relationship with schools. School is an interesting institution because it's an unlikely solution to a long-standing problem. How do we teach our children what we know? Early man did not alight upon the school as a solution to how to teach children how to hunt the woolly mammoth. They could have done. They could have nominated one adult who knew everything about the theory of hunting but had no practical experience of it to teach uh, their children as they sat silent and cross-legged in front of a cave painting. They could have given him six weeks off in the summer so that he could go on a camping holiday to the south of France with his family. They didn't. Cave paintings are not prehistoric whiteboards. For the most part, adults have taught children in a one-to-one -one and hands-on fashion from the birth of our species until the Industrial Revolution. And it is at this point that the idea that learning could be mass-produced went mainstream. Initially, the institutions of the textile factory and the learning factory uh, were similar in striking ways. Work took place in one room. The factory, or big school, was overseen and directed by one person, the foreman, or master, and was a dangerous process. You could lose fingers to the loom or the cane. Like the textile factory, school provided a much needed uh, product to the masses, but something was lost in the method. School gave a greater number of children access to what we know and provided opportunities for its standardization this is the great contribution of school to the long-standing problem of how we teach our children what we know, but it came at a cost. Teaching was no longer one-to-one -one or hands-on. School improves the efficiency of teaching, but makes it less effective. All developments in post-industrial education are a response to this essential tension. How can we make the efficient process of teaching more effective? How can we have our cake and eat it? So why does the world need online education? In brief, it's the only way of resolving the essential tension that exists between the efficiency of school and its relative ineffectiveness. My parents are teachers. My father still remembers the face of a girl at the back of a comprehensive school classroom that had descended into anarchy. He was observing the lesson as part of his teacher training in the 1980s. The girl, he was told, was bright and hardworking, but had failed the 11 plus. She was destined for an education that was especially ineffective. It still haunts him. 30 years later, my wife and I completed our teacher training via Teach First. We weren't married at the time, and uh, I had on several occasions tried to convince her to go out on a date with me, but she wasn't having any of it. Uh, but in between plotting how I was going to get her to have coffee with me, I would teach the occasional lesson. I saw the same boys and girls that my father had at the back of my own classroom. It was disconcerting and distressing. In more economically developed countries like our own, almost all children uh, manage to make it to school. The problem is that school is uh, not hands-on 
uh, and it is uh, not one-to-one. -one. So there remains a chronic engagement problem, and this is what lies at the heart of the relative ineffectiveness of school. That's why Ofsted claims that one quarter of secondary schools are providing an unsatisfactory education in this country, deemed to be either inadequate or to require improvement. In larger countries like the US, the state of affairs is parlous. A couple of years later, and my wife was still holding out, uh, although uh, because I'd uh, been repeatedly turned down by her, she had decided to escape from that exhausting process by volunteering in Tanzania uh, with, <laughs> with a company called Limited Resource Teacher Training. She trained teachers in one of the least economically developed countries in the world, routinely observing classrooms with between 70 and 80 children, two or three children to every old school wooden desk with flip-top lid, and where she was working, only about 5% of local children achieved the equivalent of one GCSE. School may be efficient, but in the least economically developed countries, it is still incapable of being economically viable. That's why UNESCO estimates that 260 million children are currently out of school, and why the situation hasn't improved in well over a decade. The World Bank describes the state of education as a major crisis for development. With the woman of my dreams in Tanzania, I was at a loss with what to do with myself, so I applied for the Fulbright Exchange Program. This took me to Harvard University, where I observed and studied edX, the famous um, massive open online course provider. Now, edX provided its first course to 155 thousand students in 162 different countries. So why on earth is online education not a more prominent feature of the education landscape already? Well, because it largely mimics school instruction. It's not one-to-one -one and it's not hands-on. So there remains a chronic engagement problem. In 2012, some 850,000 people registered for edX classes. But of these, only 550,000 actually accessed any content, and only 45,000 completed a course. Online education is not intrinsically engaging when it mimics school which is what most online education does. Online education is, in fact, so ineffective that only one in 20 people will accept a free Harvard University education if it is delivered in that fashion. So, how can the world uh, make online education more efficient and effective. My wife and I recently welcomed a beautiful daughter into our lives. She did eventually marry me. <laughs> the greatest teacher that I've ever had introduced me to the essential similarity between parenting and teaching in an email that she sent me shortly before I became a father. They are both lengthy exercises in making yourself redundant. Between the ages of 16 and 18, most children in more economically developed countries are preparing for life beyond school. And with this cohort, there is the opportunity to meaningfully experiment with the possibility of fulfilling the promise of online education. It requires two things, the two things that make education intrinsically engaging, the two things that even the cavemen knew, one-to-one -one teaching and hands-on teaching, relationships and practical application. 
Online education needs to provide video-rich teaching that emulates the one-to-one -one relationship that students have with teachers. And it needs to provide children with the opportunity to engage in one-to-one, face-to-face -one, -face conversations with one another about what they are learning about, and when necessary, with one-to-one, face-to-face -one, -face conversations with a teacher. Effective learning is a product of effective relationships. Online education needs to embrace the necessity for providing one-to-one -one opportunities, and it needs to be hands-on. A tall ask, you might suggest, uh, given the fact that online ed education may be via a screen, but the cutting edge of possible learning technologies includes virtual reality, 3D printing, holographic projection. It is not beyond the capability of online education to become uh, far more hands-on and provide students with the opportunities that they need in that regard. Online education needs to stop being school and start being how to hunt the woolly mammoth. It needs to provide one-to-one -one and hands-on teaching whilst retaining accessibility and standardization. It needs to resolve the conflict that exists between efficiency and effectiveness. My wife and I occasionally watch our daughter whilst she's sleeping. We're just embarking on that lengthy process of making ourselves redundant. I'm actually quite looking forward to being made redundant in our current role of sharing a bedroom with her. <laughs> I don't want our daughter to be the girl at the back of a classroom haunting the likes of me or my father. I want our daughter and her classmates to be intrinsically interested in whatever they are learning. Despite Ernest endeavours, School is structurally ill-designed to provide this. Online education may hold the answer. If it does, there is hope for the 260 million children out of school worldwide. There is hope for the quarter of children in our country who are currently receiving an inadequate standard of education. And there is hope for our daughter. Thank you.